Andy Rice, branding and advertising expert. It's Design in Darba Week. And there's that lovely man, Ravi Naidu, who runs the design in Darba. And I've never managed to get there, but I'm told by people who do get there that it is one of the more wonderful gatherings of people in the creative world in South Africa. Well, I think what the design in Darba has done, apart from putting South Africa's reputation uh, in that field on the map and indeed Cape Town's uh, reputation, is it's broadened the definition of what design is and what role it plays in all our lives. Now, you will cast your mind back about 12 months when this feature, But Does It Work, first started. And right at the beginning, we were uh, looking at the design of the Coca-Cola bottle, yes. the contour bottle, because it I, happened to be 100 years old. What that shows is that we typically, if we think about design, we think in, in those quite specific terms. We think about what packaging looks like, and we think perhaps about graphic design, about brochures and leaflets and annual reports and all that kind of stuff. But what uh, the design in Darba has done, and, and in line with, with trends around the world is it said design actually is all pervasive design is much more than the skill of a traditional designer who's very good at fine art or, or typography or whatever it may be design is now something that um, every aspect of our lives and our businesses uh, affects in one way or another so you can look for example at the next stage from from packaging design might be interiors and architecture. And you'll find that, that brand literate companies are increasingly briefing interior designers to make sure that their office space, their environments, in some way evoke the essence of the brand as well. Now, I haven't yet been there, but I've been invited to the new Nando's campus or head office in Johannesburg. You may well have been. I uh, haven't. No. Everybody, it, it, maybe we should organize a little bus trip down there. But the, <laughs> It is in Rosettenville, <laughs> yes. We but take ev- our passports. Yes. Everybody who's been has said that it is the most extraordinary piece of architecture and interiors to, to reflect the values of the brand. And that if you were taken in, in there and the blindfolds were, were removed and you were asked, where am I? You would, you would you say... Said, you, well, the smell would hesitation. give it away, would you? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it smells like chicken. Um, so, so, yeah. so that's one aspect of how design is broadening its, its palette. If okay. Um, yeah, design is absolutely intrinsic then to brand and to brand value yep. and to um, where the brand places itself. And there is no better example than Coca-Cola. But when we look domestically, in terms of brand, probably one of the strongest South African brands has got to be Nando's. As, as, yep. uh, and and it, it's just from the text they use in their advertising to just the essence of what they do, everything about them is distinctly Nando's. It's very clear when you're on a Mango flight versus a Kalula flight, they've understood that you've got to live that particular brand. Kalula particularly, yes. And, and they, that's been very strong right from the very start. Yeah, because they, they recognize that design is more than just the visual graphics. Now, Kalula has really strong graphics, but they also have a personality and a tone which comes through in their graphics. You might say, how the hell do they do that? Well, they have signs that say this way up on the outside of the plane. One of the funniest things ever done in aviation. Yep. It really was. So was really the first time you saw that, you thought, well, these guys are cheeky. They're self-confident. And they, they, they have the, the you know, what's to, to make that kind of statement. And so that, in turn, reinforces what has been uh, initially placed in terms of design in a more conventional sp- uh, sphere for the Kalula brand. Are, are South African marketers, are brand owners grasping this? as an opportunity. I mean, Coca-Cola proved it 100 years ago. But globally and not necessarily locally. I mean, it wasn't a, a local design. Well, look, I had an interesting uh, meeting this morning with a, a small company uh, that, that is developing some niche liquor brands. And the two that we, we saw were very clearly intrinsically um, relatively easy to, to duplicate and to make and and were actually emulating stuff that you might order in a, in a club or a bar. But what was clever about them was that the packaging was quite unique and you could look at them and get a very strong sense of what they were trying to convey. And, and the brand owner, by his own admission, said we could have done better with deeper pockets and more resources. But he understood that the presence of the product on the shelf and the promise that it evokes from the way it's been designed are all part of the communication of the brand. Okay, but why is it so expensive then to evoke the passion, evoke the mystery, evoke the you, the idea of brand? I mean, why do 
designers paid so handsomely, is that? Well, I mean, I mean we say, if a brand owner is saying we could have done better with more money, yeah. well, then that's well, not very nice to his it, current designers. It's little things like having the resources to, to get a mould for your own bottle design as opposed to having to take one off the shelf. So that would be one way of, 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 of uh, explaining why uh, design can be as expensive as it is. But, but it can be expensive, but the return on marketing investment, the return on design investment can be very substantial indeed. Design can make a, a, a decision change right up to the last moment. You might be going to go and buy your um, regular muesli or whatever it may be, uh, and literally, as you're reaching for it, something may attract your eye. Well, that looks nice. Yes, exactly. So that's the work of design as, as doing its kind of last-minute dot-com communications work. Mm. Now, and, and South African brands, in terms of their flexibility, one also wonders why one looks, for example, at the design of Gap. And Gap was a, yep. a wonderful case in point where they changed the brand identity. They modernized asking it. the consumers. They forgot who owned the Gap brand. It's not the shareholders. It's not the people who pay money to the New York Stock Exchange. It's the people who buy and support Gap. They own the brand, and they were rightfully upset. And that was that's a fundamental shift in many people's thinking when it comes to brands. Because who is the brand owner? I bet you the person, the marketing person at Gap then um, had brand owner or something like that as a fancy job title. You're not. No, exactly. The brand is owned by you and I. Um, if we support that brand or choose not to support that brand, we are having a direct impact on the on the viability of that brand. Um, and and the, our reasons for that support can can vary dramatically. So the, there's one of the probably one of the themes at this year's design and Arbor, certainly at most design gatherings, is the uh, is the concept of ethical. A design, or indeed taking a step further, design activism, where people are actually taking the concept of design and saying, how can we use this to do more than facilitate a transaction, but in order to make some positive impact on society? So a really great South African invention was the play pump. The um, what? It's the play pump. Now, you, you, you know what a, a little kid's roundabout looks like, where they, you jump on and you push it round and round and round? Yes. Well, if you imagine that the center spindle on which that rotates is actually attached to a water pump going down into a borehole, then suddenly the act of kids playing on the pump starts to fill... That play pump, got the you. play pump, right. Okay. So, so that's, that, that would be considered to be ethical design. The Body Shop is a brand built entirely on ethical design. Ethical design, not just in its packaging to be as far as possible recyclable and sustainable, but also in in, in the way it sources its raw materials from But that, from that was the trade. ethos of Anita Roddick, she, yes. the, the founder of Body Shop. Yes. I, I wonder if they're still true to it. I mean, it's what the, bra the, the origin of the brand is all about. Do they really still go to Papua New Guinea to go and find the leaf off the top of the tree that n delivers the scent, or have they managed to find I, a chemical be, way of doing I it? Would be 100% certain that they do simply because uh, people are out there to, to keep an eye to keep an eye and, 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 and to knock down those people who are, who are making false claims about their, about their brand and, and that's also absolutely true isn't it because once you've set yourself on a path when it comes to your brand you dare not change direction as Gap learned to its cost as so many brands have learned to their cost you stick to the values of that brand that have been created and the way that brand has evolved in the eyes of the consumer that owns that brand yeah, I mean, you, you wouldn't ever change your values. You're absolutely right. You might change the expression of those values, uh, but only after you've checked and asked and consulted and made sure that it's not going to be seen as, as a heavy-handed, paternalistic, well, you will like this more than, than the old one. Now, when it comes to design in Daba, I mean, this is the more creative aspect of design in South Africa. Uh, a lot of young designers coming out of college and who might be listening to us this evening going, well, I'm never going to commercialise my art. You've got to make some money somehow. Have we got great design here? We have got great design here. And, uh, and, and we get better design as a result of events like Design in Darba. So they bring in the absolute cream of the crop in terms of speakers from around the world. And they, um, you know, the uh, sort of capacity building stroke skills transfer exercises started. Relationships are built up. So someone who, who networks with uh, one of the speakers may find that they can carry on doing so um, via email or whatever thereafter. There's no doubt that we start on a high base, but an event like Design in Darba can make the base even higher still. And the world 
world of social media also for South African designers must have changed the game completely too. I know somebody who decided that they were going to make shirts in Hong Kong and we're going to then do the measuring in South Africa, get the shirts imported from Hong Kong. It didn't work out brilliantly in the end, but they were looking for a brand name for their business. They put it out on social media, had 20 ideas of which five could have flown. They chose one. And was a super little brand um, well, for, those, for a bit. Yeah. Well, those of us of a sensible height sometimes find it quite hard to find trousers off the shelf. And uh, we go to makeyourownjeans.com, which operates out of India in much the same way. Makeyourownjeans.com. You send them the measurements and they send the trousers back. Is that? I was always wondering. <laughs> I've never seen your socks. <laughs> Those of a sensible height. <laughs> the, the, sensibly, the, 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 the sensibly heighted Andy Rice, this evening, the branding and advertising expert, as always, on a money show on uh, the Tuesday night, uh, talking about branding and advertising. There's nothing that encapsulates the value of branding and design more than the Coca-Cola bottle. But, yep, as Andy points out, Nando's, I have been invited, actually. Um, but we just need to, yeah, need a bus. We'll do that.